Good evening. Today we're going to be talking about hell. Is hell a place where you go after death? Or was it used figuratively or metaphorically to illustrate a point? Oftentimes in religion, they try to use scare tactics to the people who are dumb, blind, and ignorant to the fact that hell is not a literal place. But we're going to use different sources. We're going to use a couple of different Bible dictionaries. And we're going to use the scriptures and the strongest concordance to see what is hell or where is hell more specifically. And then you make up your own decision. But with anything, do your own research. Study to show thyself approved. So now we're at Falstead's Bible Dictionary. Hell, representing two distinct words, Jihana and Hades. Greek, Sheol, Hebrew. Jihana is strictly the valley of Hinnom. Joshua 15 and 8, Nehemiah 11 and 30, the valley of the children of Hinnom, 2 Kings 23 and 10, the valley of the sons of Hinnom, 2 Chronicles 28 and 3, the valley of the dead bodies, or Tophet, where malefactors' dead bodies were cast, south of the city, Jeremiah 31 and 40, a deep, narrow glen S O. Jerusalem, where after Ahaz introduced the worship of the fire gods, the sun, Baal, and Moloch, and the Jews under Manasseh made their children to pass through the fire, Second Chronicles 33 and 6. So I'm going to read from the book, Subterranean Worlds, and it states, Sheol was either a deep pit or once again a dusty walled city. Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, did not seem to care what happened to those in Sheol, all there enjoyed a equally miserable and shadowy existence far beneath the sunny world of the living. In time, however, this image of Sheol was to change. In the apocryphal book of Enoch, we find descriptions of several journeys made by Enoch to the afterworld. He visits a flaming pit in which the fallen angels are forever punished. He also visits Sha'ol, depicted as a huge mountain with four great hollow places. The angel Raphael tells Enoch that these hollow places were created that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here to the day of the great judgment. One of the hollow places holds the spirits of the righteous and the others are for sinners when they die. Their spirits shall be set apart in great pain to the day of judgment. By the beginning of the Christian era, the Hebrew underworld had evolved further. The place of righteousness became known as paradise and the place of punishment was called Jehonom or Jihana, which probably took its name from the Valley of Hinnom, south of Jerusalem. The Valley of Hinnom had at one time been the scene of child sacrifices to the Canaanite god Moloch. And later, it became the garbage dump for Jerusalem, where trash and animal carcasses were burned. Jehonim was usually described as an enormous realm in the depths of the earth with three entrances, one in the sea, one in the desert, and one in Jerusalem itself. Here, the souls of the wicked were punished in flames and gnawed by worms and serpents. And this conception of a subterranean realm of torment was assimilated rapidly into the new Christian religion. Keyword new. Okay. Between about the third and the 17th centuries, hell was the ultimate fear of every Christian, and the terror of hell shaped much of Christian society. Hell became a place where a soul might be punished eternally and brutally for a few momentary transgressions. Hell was hidden forever in the depths of the light of the sun or for those in earlier times who pictured the earth as flat. So now we're going to look up the word hell, mythological being. Hell, Old Norse, is a female being in Norse mythology who is said to preside over an underworld realm of the same name where she receives a portion of the dead. So we're going to look up the etymology of the word hell. The Old Norse divine name Hel is identical to the name of the location over which she rules. It stems from Proto-Dramatic feminine noun 
Hell Joe, concealed place, the underworld, compared with Gothic Hell Ja, Old English Hell or Hell, Old Frasian Heli, Old Saxon Helena, Old High German Hella, itself is a derivative of Helen to cover, conceal, and hide. Reading on, it states, and offered them as burnt offerings, Jeremiah 7 and 21. Jeremiah 19, 2 through 6. So the golly, Josiah defiled the valley, making it a receptacle of carcasses and criminal corpse in which worms were continually gendering. A perpetual fire was kept to consume this petrifying matter, hence it became the image of that awful place where all that are unfit for the holy city are cast out a prey to the ever gnawing worm of conscience from within the unquenchable fire of torments from without mark 9 42 through 50 that worm dieth not implies that not only the worm but they also on whom they praise die not the language is figurative or metaphorically so hell is not a literal place it seems to imply that hell was actually the valley of hinnom so let's look at it again Hell, representing two distinct words, Gianna and Hades, Greek. Gianna is strictly the valley of Hinnom. So now we're going to look up the word figuratively. In the States, adverb number one, used to indicate a departure from a literal use of words. Metaphorically, we left a lot of people, literally and figuratively, in the dark. Metaphorically, adverb. In a way that uses or relates to metaphor, figuratively. Speaking metaphorically, my dad said I just won the lottery. Reading on, but it represents corresponding realities never yet experienced and therefore capable of being conveyed to us only by figures. The phrase forever and ever, istos enos edon, occurs 20 times in the New Testament. Sorry if I butchered that. 16 times of God, once of the saints, which are the Israelites in the scriptures, future blessedness, the three remaining of the punishment of the wicked and the evil one. It is likely it is used 17 times of absolute eternity, yet three times of limited eternity. The term for everlasting adios in Judges 1 and 6, the angels who kept not their first estate, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day is from a word meaning absolutely always jihana is used by our lord yahweh shai matthew 5 29 through 30 matthew 10 28 matthew 23 and 15 matthew 23 and 33 luke 12 and 5 with the addition of fire matthew 5 and 22 matthew 18 and 9 mark 9 and 47 and by james 3 and 6. Our present meaning of hell then applies to Jihana. So as we previously read, Jihana is strictly the valley of Hinnom, where they did child sacrifices, the valley of dead bodies or Tophet, where male factors, dead bodies were cast south of the city. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 40. A deep, narrow south of Jerusalem, where after Ahaz introduced the worship of the fire gods, the sun, Baal, and Moloch. So now we're at the Strong's Concordance, H2011, Hinnom. Number one, Hinnom equals lamentation. A, a valley deep and narrow, ravine, with steep rocky sides located southwest of Jerusalem, separating Mount Zion to the north from the hill of evil council and the sloping rocky plateau of the plain, Rephim. To the south. Reading on, but not the other word, Hades or Sheol, hell formerly did apply when the KGV of the Bible was written. It then meant whole, hollow, or unseen place. Вот такое впечатляющее зрелище открылось в иллюминаторах вертолета съемочной группе нашей телекомпании при возвращении из очередной тундровой командировки в июле. Это кратер гидролоколита. В народном названии – бугунях или кочка газового пучения. И надо отметить – внушительного размера. Это так. 
shall all come from the root to make hollow the common receptacle of the dead below the earth. Number 16 and 30, Deuteronomy 32 and 22, deep, Job 11 and 8, intercessible, Isaiah 5 and 13, Song of Solomon 8 and 6, hell, Hades, often means the grave, Job 14 and 13. So now we're at numbers 16 and 30, but if the Most High make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them and they go down quick into the pit then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the most high reading on in the old testament time when as yet the hamishiach had not abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel second timothy 1 and 10 death in the intermediate state represented by hades suggested thoughts of gloom as to hezekiah Isaiah 38, 9 through 20, led up, however, with gleams of sure hope from the Most High's promises, key word, promises of the resurrection, Psalms 16 and 10 through 11, Psalms 17 and 15, Isaiah 26 and 19, Hosea 13 and 14, Daniel 12 and 2. Hence to occur of the Spirit's being with God or the Most High and peace in the intermediate state. So now we're back at Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites, to who pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenant, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. So what were the promises that the Most High gave to Israel? Number one, the land of Israel, sovereignty. The people in the land today are not the ancient or biblical people of the scriptures. Number two, a savior. Throughout Israel's history, they have had messianic figures. Okay. Number three, salvation. Number four, the Holy Spirit or the rock, Hakodash. And number five, eternal life. So now we're at Romans chapter 11, verse 26 through 27. And so shall all Israel be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob or Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins or iniquity. So now I'm going to be reading from the book Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? And the will falleth shattered into the pit, and the dust returneth to the earth as it was. For out of the ground we were taken for the dust we are. And to the dust we shall return. And the spirit return unto the most high who gave it. He ain't gonna make it. I've seen it a million times. He's a gunner. You see? Here they come. Lucky Genesis 2 and 7 And the most high formed man of the dust of the ground And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life And man became a living soul Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was And the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it It could have been the other one You never know So now we're at Psalms chapter 139, verse 7 and 8. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, thou art there. Now we're at Psalms chapter 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord or the Most High forever. Continuing on, the passage which represents Hades in the grave as a place where the Most High can no longer be praised means simply that the physical powers are all suspended so that the Most High pursues can be no longer set forth on earth among the living. The anomalous state in which man is on cloth, 
the body is repulsive to the mind and had not yet the clear gospel light to make it attractive as Paul viewed it. Philemon 1, 21 through 23, 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. To the bad, Hades was depicted as a place of punishment where God's wrath reached to the depths. Deuteronomy 32 and 22, Amos 9 and 2, and Psalms 9 and 17, Psalms 49 and 14, Isaiah 14. Thus, the unseen state, even in the Old Testament, was regarded as having a distinction between the godly and the ungodly. Proverbs 14 and 32, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteousness has hope in his death. This is further confirmed by the separation of the rich man and Lazarus, the former in hell, Hades, the latter in Abraham's bosom, Luke 16 and 23, in the penitent, death soul going to be with Jesus or Yahweh in paradise, the word implying the recovery in heavenly bliss of the paradise lost by Adam, Luke 23 and 43. Tartarus, the pagan Greek term for the place of enchantment of the Titans. And Titans just means Satan or High Satan. Rebels against the Most High occurs in 2 Peter 2 and 4 of the lost angels. The deep or abyss or bottomless pit. Abus, Luke 8 and 31, Revelations 9 and 11. The firm faith and hope. Of a abiding heavenly city is unequivocally attributed to the patriarchs. Hebrews eleven sixteen through thirty five. So all the believing Israelites, Acts twenty six and seven, Acts twenty three six through nine, Hades, hell is used for destruction. Matthew eleven and twenty three, Matthew sixteen and eighteen. Yahweh Shah has the keys, and will at last co-sign it to the lake of fire, which is the second death implying that the Hamishiach and his people shall never again be disembodied spirits. So there was no hell in the original Greek. We know that Jehana or Hades is referring to the Valley of Hinnom. And there are Strong's H612 outline of biblical usage. Number one, Tophet equals place of fire. A, a place in the southeast end of the Valley of the Son of in them, south of Jerusalem, same as H8613. So now we're in the book, The New Strong's Exclusive Concordance of the Bible. 1067 Jihana, Hebrew or 1516 and 2011, Valley of the Son of Hinnom, Jihana or Jihinom, a valley of Jerusalem, use keyword right here figuratively or metaphorically as a name for the place or state of everlasting punishment and in hell and we can put right there a question mark so now we're at the zoner van's compact bible dictionary page 191 jihana valley of hinnom a valley on the west and southwest of jerusalem which formed part of the border between judah and benjamin Joshua 15 and 8, 18 and 16, Nehemiah 11 and 30. Here, Ahaz, 2 Chronicles 28 and 3, 2 Kings 16 and 3, and Manasseh, 2 Chronicles 33 and 6. See, 2 Kings 21 and 6, sacrificed their sons to Moloch. For this reason, Josiah defiled the place. After referring to the idolatrous barbarities, Jeremiah prophesied a great slaughter of the people there. And in the siege of Jerusalem. After the Old Testament period, the Jewish apocalyptic writers began to call the Valley of Hinnom the entrance to hell, later hell itself. The word occurs 12 times in the New Testament, always translated hell, margin, jihana. 11 times it is on the lips of Yahawashai as a final punishment for calling one's brother a fool. So it clearly states that hell was an actual place on earth, not after you die. Because we know in Hebrew, they use the word Sheol, which meant whole, hollow, bottomless pit and so forth. Pitch black in a sense. So this notion of when you die and you go to heaven or hell, no, that's just Christian nonsense. But peace and shalom.